Reed Duke versus Aspiring Spike. Pretty exciting uh, you know, winner's match here in Modern Super League Week 3. I'm Gavin, joined by Carolyn Pardee, or Caroline Pardee, and we are ready to kick things off. Looks like the players have kept their opening hands. We've got an Ancient Stirrings Turn 1 from the Hard and Scales player. We, there's, uh, that, there's that Agatha Soul Cauldron in the hand, too, by the way. That card, brand new and really nice. That card is so crazy in this Hard and Scales deck. It just turns everything into like into a walking ballista. It, it's it's going to be pretty overpowered, I think. I'm pretty excited to see it. So there's Patchwork Automaton to get the ball rolling. So if you look at, you know, really it's a tale of two decks, right? Down on Spike's side of the screen, you're like, all right, play some Automatons, play some Ravagers, chip in some damage. And on Reed's side, he's going to be going up the Beanstalk to Fairy, try and Leyline Binding and Temporal Mastery, you know? It's just it's the whole different ball game over there. <laughs> they are two very different decks. Okay, it's well. funny, Spike's hand felt slow, but I guess nothing's really slow <laughs> with Ravager, so I don't know. The Patchwork Automaton, a nice little uncommon coming out of Kamigawa and Neon Dynasty, that thing can grow fast in this deck, right? I mean, next turn, you know, might cast the Ravager, might cast the Soul Cauldron, and then, you know, put him, put a, a Reed facing lethal on turn five, maybe turn six if he doesn't draw any action. I mean, pretty good stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then, and Teferi cannot bounce it. Um, it, it right. Reads, the, yeah. The, the Ward 2, quite ward relevant, two. As, as we saw in your game. Yeah. You're, you know, I just wanted to make sure people knew it was there. Yeah, I, 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 I most I certainly did not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did not. Um, Reed looking more to play some more lands, though. Maybe yep. another Beanstalk? Yeah, a couple of interesting options. I mean, you can't Leyline Binding the Patchwork Automaton, so you could go for uh, a Beanie Boy or, yeah, Preordain. Probably yeah, actually, see the I can't. Here. I actually don't know who went first, so I don't know if Reed has another land drop here. Aspiring Spike kicked us off this game. Okay, with the turn one so, ancient strings. So, so yeah, we can get another land drop. Yep. Classic yeah. like, explore into some time walks. I always love this kind of deck. I think it's really <laughs> cool that Reed brought this to the table today. It's a real, a, a real fun one and a fun one for you to go up and brew. Yeah, I, I want to know how close, like, uh, their modern pro tour just happened, right? So I guess this deck wasn't really that good before <laughs> Beanstalk, but where was it on his list, you know? <laughs> yeah, he's was in the back of his head waiting for a little Beanstalk to come around. So it just That's plays the Lutzwap Teeth and passes. Now, he's keeping up mana for Leyline Binding. He can't Leyline Binding the Patchwork Automaton, but he could Binding, you know, one of the other things that uh, Spike plays out, so... But man, that Ward 2 really doing work on that Patchwork Automaton. And I, I will say the the binding is pretty good, you know, exiling. That's what um, Spike was saying, you know, getting rid of all of his stuff. But the Ravager does allow it, uh, the things to be sacked instead of put under the binding. So the Cauldron could still be relevant. Yeah, very much so. Oh, we're going to go. Here we are. Just going all, all, all in on smashing. Play Hangerback Walker for, for zero. Nothing, yeah. Just to pump up those patchwork automatons. And that's a really heads up play here by Spike. All right, so Reed's gonna search for a land in response. And then, yeah, just gonna go for a little ley line bind, drawing card off the beanstalk. And I, I think the target is probably gonna be that soul cauldron, because um, can't, you know, it's a little harder sacrifice in response, can't exile the creature from the graveyard, put a counter on something. Yeah, soul cauldron goes down. Which. Technically, is fine for Spike next turn, since there is another one. Yep, he's got another Cauldron waiting in the wings. It's a lot of damage this turn. It, it, yeah, it definitely is. I mean, he's going to crunch in for nine here. Basically, Reed has to solve the problem this turn. Now, he could Leyline Binding away one of the Patrick Automatons playing the Ward, or, um, or Teferi in a way, paying the Ward. But that's still going to be probably too much coming in on the other side. I think he's got to really string something together uh, on this turn. Drawing a time warp would be nice, so he can just take an extra turn and get ahead. Yeah, it's and tough, too, because he doesn't... Yeah, that's uh, going to be tough, I think. I, I don't see any main deck Wraths. That's what I was looking for. No Supreme Verdicts. Yeah, those are sideboard deck. only. Well, they, So Spike set up... He sacked the Ravager to set it up so that five damage is lethal 
And uh, he's got two five power ward two creatures. So um, going to be a pretty tough road for Reed Duke to hoe right here. He did not draw a time walk effect, so we can't try and string that together by a turn, get up to six mana. If he ley line bindings, that's going to cost him three, so he can deal with one of them, but then the other one is still around. So putting Reed in certainly a bit of a pinch right now. Go fast. That's, I think, what Spike has to do in order to get through all of the cool spells that Reed has. It's hard to cast a time walk if, or time warp, excuse me, if uh, you're already dead. So That's true. There's, there's, there's the best way to take extra turns is to kill your opponent and you take all of the turns. Correct. Um, all right, so Reed, Reed thinking, what can he find out of this? Could he preordain into something? Right, Turns out if there's any gain life situations. I don't see that either. I guess Solitude does something. Yeah, oh, I mean, you still got to yeah. pay the ward too. Um, so, you know, maybe what you do is you go for Leyline Binding, pay, preordain, leave up two men, leave up two mana. And if you find Solitude, you get to cast it. That would be the move, probably. Yeah. That's kind, of, that's kind of the only way I can see playing two spells, but it does not leave Reed in the best spot. Though yeah, I guess I mean, it, it also leaves like basically nothing. So Yeah, I mean, it leaves you in a pretty good spot. You're going to need to find exactly a Solitude, I think, on top of your library. He does get three peaks, essentially, right? The top two cards of his library, plus what's a, ever underneath if he puts them on the bottom. Yeah. And uh, we'll see. see well, and, uh, up oh, the there it wow. is. Check it out. There's the Solitude. So... Yeah, I was gonna could... say Beanstalk draws a card too, but <laughs> didn't need it. <laughs> yeah, now I think actually we are gonna end up slightly short uh, because Leyland Binding costs a mana to cast. So Ooh. he'll have to draw another solitude off this up to Beanstalk. Oh darn, we got so excited. And uh he... oh, but the one ring, the one ring will buy you time, right? Mm, yeah, I guess. And, Wait. and check this out: read ops <laughs> to not exile take the two mana for the ward. Because he has to just play the one ring and stay around. That's pretty funny. Wow. But absolutely the right play. You have to do what it takes to stay alive. Yeah. Uh, now here comes the Agatha Soul Cauldron. Pumping those up. Giving them all the abilities of Arcbound Ravager and Hangerback Walker. Um. Well, isn't... It's a slight problem because can't Spike just make a bunch of Hangerback Walkers? Well, like he can... Walkers? Right, so... So the way that uh, Hanger Back Walker and Agatha Soul Cauldron interact is it gives the activated abilities of the cards in the graveyard. Mm, the activated ability not... of Hanger Back Walker is to just put a counter on it, not gotcha. the triggers. So oh, okay, okay. So it's not as busted as I thought. Yeah, still quite good. Now, if you get a Walking Ballista in there, that's where things get really gnarly. All right, so Reed uh, taps the One Ring, draws a card, going to go down to three life, draws to Fairy Time Rambler. I don't think that's it. So he can spend three mana to Leyland Binding away one of the Patchwork Automatons, but he's still going to be short. But he could draw, with Leyland Binding, he could draw a, a Solitude, perhaps, off the top of his library with Up the Beanstalk. Yeah, he the can kind of go, th ward, go for the same. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I didn't know it had Ward before, I certainly do now. And it's coming you, in clutch. You might just need to one ring up, and yeah, you risk it. But yeah, here he goes. He's going to one ring, draw some cards. He draws a okay. time warp. You got another That's going to buy him a little bit of time. It will drop him to two life, or to one life, rather, on his next turn. Oh, so wow. he's really, really in a in a squeeze right here, but trying his best. Draws okay. up the beanstalk. Another beanstalk. That's a lot of beanstalks. Plays a land. He can't crack the fetch land, though, because he's sitting and be sitting at virtual uh, one life. Right, so he's got to leave that in play. Goes down to two, uh, one off the one oh, ring. Well, this is the turn, yeah. oh, and he draws solitude. This All is right. enough mana, right, for it to so work. So he or... can do it, but then can he get rid of the one ring? That's what he's got to try to do. And he draws a card all the way up to the side there. I can't quite make out what the one on the right is. It might be a one of them. Pool looks like breeding pool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so yeah, this is a really, a really <laughs> sticky situation. So you need the the other solitude. At right, off the I, solitude. And he can't crack his fetch lands, right? He could do something creative like Leyline Binding, uh, the One Ring, and then Solitude or whatever, but he's he's just like a little bit short on every axis. He doesn't quite have enough mana to do it all. He can't crack his fetch lands. He could try and take another turn. He's like sitting on a one life, you know, it's just like it's it's just narrowly, very narrowly um not enough in a lot of ways. But maybe he'll find it. He I could try and beanstalk. 
You can try and Beanstalk into a solid, another Solitude, Solitude them both away, and then Leyline Binding his own ring in his upkeep. <laughs> that would be impressive. Certainly impressive, but Reed Duke is one impressive man, so. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Do what we can. Right, and none of these lands he's got right now are any good. He can't tap them for mana. They'll come into play tapped. You'll have to sack him. He can't use them right now. That, is, that Explorer is not going to do anything better. Yeah, so it's all the lands we have, and that's all we got. Okay, what's Reed brewing up? I assume Solitude is the start? All right, so here's what's going to happen. Ring over Leyline like, Binding, it looks like. Targeting. Oh, this is... All right, so yeah, he's going to land button to draw a card. He draws the one ring. Okay, so okay so survives what, what again. He, what he's got to do is exile his own the one ring. He doesn't have to because he has another one ring. Oh, right, he can, he, he can lend your lend your little way, yeah. Yeah. Right, 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 yep. So he plays Leland Binding. Wow. Plays Agatha Soul Cauldron. Draws exactly the one ring. Holy smokes. Great draws here from Reed Duke. Then wow. he's going to slam down this one ring, gain protection, and stabilize at one life. And stabilize is a very strong word, I will note. He'll stabilize at <laughs> one life. But so many live draws from Aspiring Spike, right? If he draws a single Walking Ballista, that is game over. Um, but let's see what he finds. Wow. Clean up step. Get rid of some of these lands we can't do anything with. I guess the Explorers technically still draw a card. Oh, and the chat points out you can't land by any of your own things. Nice. Good to know. Great. Love it. Good job, chat. Chat's always. You don't have to lay line binding your own stuff very often. I'll tell you that. But, or you wouldn't, that situation wouldn't come up very often. Uh, okay. That is not a walking ballista. Okay. Okay. How does he survive this turn? <laughs> I guess it involves solitude. So, well, so now he's got a bunch of mana. He's got he's got access to six mana, so he can solitude for free, exiling one of them, the fairy time raveler, and pay the two for the other. Right? That that, that should do it. One, two, three, four, five. No, that's only because solitude is free. Yeah, so it costs two mana, and then oh, the the, costs... the flooded strand. Yeah, the flooded strand is stopping that currently. Oh, there we go. The Buy another turn. The oh, we picked it up. up. Oh, I see, I see. I thought we drew it. Yeah, so we, we got another turn. Reed well, always still has needs, another turn. He still needs the fourth mana. That's flooded strand cannot be sacrificed right now because we are sitting at one life. Oh, no. Okay. I guess the Solitude can draw another card, the draw basic. Right, that try and draw a basic me. land. So here comes Solitude. It'll draw a card off, off the Beanstalk. And this, this Flooded Strand has really made it challenging. Okay. We can't see what card, I think. Or maybe it was the Leyline Binding, so never mind. It was not a land. All right, okay, and there it is. That's it. A great effort there from Reed. A really fantastic effort there from Reed, but uh, was sadly not able to to put, to, to stretch it, everything together for a win. Although very valiant effort, nicely done. I will say, like Spike didn't have to do a lot. I guess other than sweating every draw ever, like he did just have kind of two big creatures, and that's it. He didn't go too crazy. There wasn't hardened scales. There wasn't Thoslith like. I don't know. It seems like a little bit more in favor for him, but Reed does get his Supreme Verdicts. I wasn't right. quite watching sideboarding. Did you see anything anything else spicy come in? Yeah, so you see those, those uh, Supreme Verdicts come in. That's going to be a, a pretty big deal here to help just put a put a gum in the works on that on that side of things. Uh, I see over on Aspiring Spike side. I think that welding jar is sideboard. Let me, I think that's a sideboard welding jar, not a main deck one. Let me look at the deck list. Um, yeah, I think there's one sideboard welding jar he's brought in here. Other than that, not a ton of changes. Mm -hmm. This way you can welding jar uh, off Urza Saga to keep your stuff alive, which is pretty notable. Uh, notably, though, um, you know you can regenerate off Supreme Verdict, right? It's not Wrath of God, so he can you can stick around through through all of that. 
Okay. And uh, looks like Reed takes out his explorers, takes out his Teferi. His Teferi prod is a little too slow. Oh, no. Not the Temporal Mastery. Temporal Mastery coming out. How will we know when it's a miracle? All right. And the players are off of the races. Let's go into game two. Okay. Reed's going to be on the play here. And that's going to be a mulligan for sure. Yeah. Going down. This hand, though, looks a lot more reasonable. We'll see if he keeps, but I imagine he will. He's got Path to Exile, Supreme Verdict, Leyline Binding, up the Beanstalk. So that's going to give him some action to go. Uh, Spike's hand, on the other hand, he's got that early Ancient Stirring, Zabaz, Patchwork Automaton, and then Urza Saga as well. So for a, 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 all, an all right opening hand, nothing, uh, nothing bananas, but good enough to, to get the job rolling. Yeah, I guess I'm, I just want to see cool, spicy hands, but <laughs> this seems like a normal, regular hand that you would keep. You know, the, Retract points out in the chat, this is a, a tough match for Reed. I, I definitely agree that, you know, this kind of deck is going to have trouble with the quick, aggressive decks. It doesn't have as much on the ground interaction. However, if there's any stumbling, if, you know, uh, Spike gets swept or whatever uh, by a board sweeper, that might buy Reed the time he needs to get rolling. And I think, you know, last game we saw Reed could, could chain stuff together. He was very slightly short. And, um, you know, if he'd been on the play that game, he might be able to make it all happen. So it might be and a little bit tighter. In post-board okay. games, he has access to the sweepers, which would have clearly been clutch last exactly. game. Yeah. So here's turn one Zabaz, followed by Patchwork Automaton, just getting that aggression rolling. And Spike has drawn Agatha Soul Cauldron again sitting there. Yes, but not a lot else, I'll say, currently. Yeah. Now, now with that Urza Saga, decent chance we might just see him make a construct. Nope, he's gonna just he's gonna pass. He's gonna go for ancient stirrings and then uh probably the soul cauldron to trigger the automaton here. Yeah, or something fun off the stirrings. Like a ravenger. Very nice. All right, so here comes the ravager, I imagine. Or the soul cauldron. That's great. Yeah, I was gonna say I think there's some concern about sweepers, like just playing all your creatures on curve. But... All right. Yeah, now, now Reed looks like he's actually in a pretty good spot now, right? Like he, he's going to go land. He can sweep the board, get rid of the automaton and Sabaz if he wants to, or just one ring and start his draw engine going and offer up a sweeper next turn. There's not a great way for uh, Spike to disrupt that. You could find Welding Jar with Urza Saga, but that's only going to do minimal damage. Yeah, and Reed is in a much better life total spot as well. <laughs> um, Reed does seem really prioritized to get rid of that cauldron. I think it's a pretty scary card, even though it is brand new to the deck. <laughs> and here's the one ring, right? So you'll pick up a new card off that. And then, you know, if he untaps, he'll have the one ring active. He'll get 12 life or 11 life, I suppose. Start to Supreme Verdict the board away. And that can really stabilize him. So will Spike make a construct here? Given, I think given how he's been playing a little conservatively, it's like we're just still thinking. The construct is nice here because it, you know, he doesn't have to add anything else to the board. And the ring doesn't necessarily say that there was no sweeper. Just that the ring is cool. Okay, okay. And there's Needle. So he's going to Needle, I presume, the one ring. Correct. He actually named a real card this time. That's nice. <laughs> Against me, comes... he, he did not name a real card. Well, he did, but not a real relevant card. So there's... There's Ravager. Going to crunch in now, right now. We'll probably, yeah, I can't uh, can't attack, I guess, because of the one ring, right? So yeah. that's going to skip there. Reed? I don't know. Reed seems like he's got all the things he needs in order to. Yep. I, that, right. He's got that. He's got the one ring active. He's got preordain he's to find what he needs. He's got a uh, draw three if he wants it. And uh, just we just have to just have to wait around for all of the pieces to come together. But 
I think this is the spot Spike doesn't want to be in. One one okay card in hand and not much else going on. Maybe some Nexus beats. Maybe we'll just beat in with our Ink Moth Nexus 10 turns in a row. Let's see. Opting for not that plan. That makes sense. <laughs> All right, there's the one ring. Make him lose a little bit of life. He draws Path to Exile for an extra removal. So his hand is pretty well stocked at this point, right? He's got Leyline Binding, Double Solitude, Path to Exile. It's kind of incredible this, how how good Path looks in comparison to the last couple of years. <laughs> it's been nice. Okay, Welding Jar does not work. Maybe now we'll turn to the Ink Moth Nexus plan. And he's got the Welding Jar to protect something. But yeah, I imagine we're going to see, uh, you know, some this ballista get blown up. And also Reed having four exile removal spells is, you know, going to blank that Welding Jar pretty much. And Reed can just play Solitude too. It doesn't even have to, I guess, Reed will lose his Solitude that way. But he's got a lot of options. <laughs> Let's say a little dance of does Spike pump it up? We'll see. Reese hand is just like blue white control cards right now, and I don't, I don't like it. I like, Here's I like the fun stuff. Here's Solitude, picking up a new card, right? So by not activating it there, we can now activate it in response to get an extra damage in on the um, on the Walking Ballista, or extra two damage in the Walking Ballista, thanks to Hardened Scales. Yeah, that was a good little dance. And then here we go. Oh, I, I like that. There's actually a nice little trick with Pendlehaven, so that get rid of all the counters. Maybe it was All just right. for fun. I actually can't tell if it was needed. Uh-oh. All right. Well, Spike is now a little out of gas. He's got uh, he's got these two Ink Moth Nexi he can send in with. Now, but Reed has answers waiting in the wings for those if he wants to. Yeah, it's actually, it puts Reed at a higher life total <laughs> because he's currently at seven and then he's starting over again. He's just going to hard cast the Solitude, draw a pair of cards off of the Beanstalk, get rid of one of those Ink Moth Nexus. He'll go to one Poison, but a long, long way away. Takes the damage off the One Ring, draws another Solitude. <laughs> I think this is Reed's. I will say Reed bringing Rest in Peace is interesting. I guess the Agatha Soul Cauldron is just a really scary situation. Right, and if there are cards you just don't need in the matchup, you know, it's a tool in your toolbox. Right, so it plays the Welding Jar. But, uh, you know, Spike had a great a great start, and this deck is really prone to some really nice aggressive starts, but Reed has definitely turned the corner. He's got everything he wants, basically. He's got three removal spells in his hand. He's just going to cast a Solitude to draw two cards <laughs> and to have a 3-2 attacker, right? I mean, he's going to crunch in, gain six life, and once you get that rolling, he's going to keep drawing it off. Yeah, there it is, okay. Yeah, Spike is like, no, thank you. He's like, yeah, we're good. Uh, we can move on. Let's head to game. Well, let's go see sideboarding. All right, in comes Pithing Needle. A couple small uh, changes. Be on the draw. Um, or being on the play, rather. Make a couple small changes to the deck. Reed's deck is so sweet, right? Is, is it better than other decks in the format? I have no idea, but it's just a delight to watch. I'm really enjoying <laughs> watching him play this deck. Ooh, I just saw the dress down. That's fun. It's a good one. I like that. Yeah, I think this rest, is... This... Rest in Peace also stops Modular, the chat points out, right? A, a, a great point. Stops Hangerback Walker triggers as well as uh, Arcbound Rapture triggers. So. Wow. Yeah, so it's actually a really good side worker. Hmm. 
Okay. I think both opening hands seem pretty good. Yeah, great opening here, actually, I think, for the scales player. I mean, it is missing the hardened scales, which is, of course, the card you're always looking for. But it's got uh, an early patchwork automaton that will grow pretty quickly. <clears throat> Ooh, there's lots of removal hanging out over there. Man, this hand just looks like a blue light control. I don't like it. Draw the cool cards. On the other hand, I love it. <laughs> All right. Cracks of land. Going to probably go for a preordain here. Take some damage yet. A little bit of scrying. I guess I assume Spike will go the kind of normal play at this point, which is a turn two patchwork automaton. Um, maybe a welding dart to protect it. So it doesn't really protect you, much, I guess, in this tech. You called it, Caroline. There's the patchwork automaton. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> yeah, does welding dart protect anything? Because it just regenerates, right? Everything else exiles? Well, Supreme Verdict, for example, oh. it'll protect against that, which is pretty nice. Doesn't that say? Okay, it yeah. says can't be countered. Okay. Right. All right. One sure. mana. Oh, is it Wrath of God that says can't be regenerated? Correct. Yeah, Wrath yep. can't be regenerated. All right. So. Oh, uh, I like. Gonna march of otherworldly. Oh wow! Getting rid of the Urza Saga. Very nice. Very nice. They're setting him back a land. So just playing a little Stone Rain action right there, and we're gonna see this automaton hit hard. Here comes Welding Jar. Here comes Arcbound Ravager. Nice little smash. All right, in for three, going to 14. On the other side of the table, it's like, oh, yeah, I'll take three. And then two turns later, you're like, wow, how am I dead? <laughs> like, I just took three once. For sure, yeah. Now, there's a uh, Path to Exile and a Solitude sitting here. So there, if Reed wants to get that uh, automaton off the table by paying the ward cost, he certainly can. Um, if he wants to go even solitude one of the uh, one of them, pay for it, and then path to exile the other, he could get rid of the board completely, although that does put him pretty far down on cards. Mm -hmm. um, and he just looks like he's gonna pass here and just say, yeah. you make you make the first move. Let's I was see gonna say, Reed, Reed does seem like the wait and you you do all the work kind of kind of guy before he makes any decisions. All right, so then here is Zabaz. Gonna make that modular a little stronger. Yeah, now there's somewhere for the counters to go. And there is that walking ballista. Will this require some action from Reed? Reed is certainly gonna need to do something this turn. The only question is which, what exactly and how much of it. Mm hmm. All right, he's going to start by cracking the fetch land. And we're probably going to see at least one, if not two, removal spells spent this turn. All right, he's going to start with the path to exile. And he's going to pay the ward on the patchwork automaton. Smart. Great play. <laughs> okay. It's like that's all, right. all that's all we're doing right now. Yep, two, two damage. damage. Totally fine for Reed. Now Reed is, needs to find his fourth land, so he's gonna. Okay, first he's gonna go with the rest in peace. And as we now know, <laughs> that stops the mod roller. Yep, so just wanted to get that modular down. He's gonna hit the walking ballista, and this gives Reed an opening to get rid of that ballista, which it's kind of probably he was hoping for here by forcing uh, Spike's hand. Yep, yeah, so here's going like... to come the Solitude. Exile the Ley Line Binding. It does give Spike the chance to kind of draw something juicy and keep going. Reed's not up to a lot and stuck on three. Three lands. He's going yes. to preordain. May find the fourth land here. Oh, okay. 
And then, you know, if it, a lot's going to depend on this turn, what Spike draws. Because if Reed untaps, he'll, if he has four lands and the one ring and has a Beanstalk ready to go, he could climb himself out of the, the hole. If uh, if Spike, on the other hand, draws some action, stirring's in something, something good. Um, yeah, I guess uh, maybe, maybe Rest in Peace makes it kind of limiting on what Spike can draw. Certainly limits it. So is the is the beanstalk? It's it actually that's what it does. It draws you out of the hole. Is that why it's beanstalk? Oh, because you, you climb up the beanstalk. You climb up, right? yeah. So you're yeah, in the hole, you and you, you know you cast your five mana spells and you make your way out. That makes sense, actually. Climb right. up the beanstalk. Oh, I wonder what the decision is. Yeah, we can't see the top of the library. We only get to see what you all see, but it looks like Reed is a bit in the tank on what he wants here. If I were to guess, and I could be wrong, it's probably a calculation on if he wants the fourth land. If there are two big cards on top, he's going to put on the bottom trying to get a fourth land. Um, but I, I don't know. It's all just speculation. Ooh. Oh, here we go. We get a little live look. Yeah, he, he keeps Lorien revealed. Oh. It was, so no uh, land. We're, we're being told the cards on top of his library were up the Beanstalk and Lorien revealed. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to start with the Ancient Stirrings here. And uh, once again, don't know what the what the choices are, but... Uh... Oh, yes, we do. Okay. He's going to grab Urza Saga. Okay. And then uh, looking like maybe the Automaton, Zabaz, Hangerback Walker. Automaton seems like here. a good, a good yeah. non-modular threat. I yeah, like I love it. that. Nice live look in there. Nice, great work, uh, yeah, great role thank producer. Yeah, all right, so he crunches Reed down to nine. Knows that there's no fourth land from Reed, so he's you know Ooh. feels a bit of blood in the water. All right, there's up the beanstalk, looking for that land. Draws Leyline Binding, but cannot cast it for just one mana. And go get a land with a uh, um Lor Lorian Retreat. Is that what it's called? Lorian Revealed. Yeah. Revealed. So we've got white, blue, green currently as. The, th uh, the land types. So, we have a Triome. Leyland Binding, not at one yet. And there's the Triome. Okay. Can we draw a combination of artifacts? All right. So, Spike draws Agatha's Soul Cauldron, which is extremely weak given that all graveyards are exiled forever. So, instead, he just opts to uh, leave up Urza Saga um, token creation mana and passes here. Makes sense. All right, Reed draws Manamo. And now he can go for the one ring if he wants to. <laughs> and untap it. <laughs> yeah. Can't, I guess can't untap it this turn, but still. Pretty fun. But in future turns, it, that's a great combination. Absolutely. Yeah. Reed can also Leyline Binding and pay, right? So it gets reduced by a four right now. So yeah, if you wanted okay. to do that, you could. Although it would take a... His, Basically, his whole turn. Yeah. All right. He opts to just go up the beanstalk. Finds a finds another land. Ooh, there we go. And I guess we can still lay line binding, just not targeting the patchwork. Maybe target the saga token. Yeah, the, the token will deal threaten threatens a bunch of damage. And drawing that extra card off the beanstalk is yeah. going to dig into what he's looking for. Yeah, two two cards will be nice. So there's that four four construct token with the trigger on the stack. I predict he'll. Make another token here. Yeah, there's not much else that Spike would need the mana for, so I think that makes sense. Okay. Um, and in response to making that token, I think he's just going to... Oh, that's right. We can now lay them biting for one with the tri new Triumph. Yep. Get rid of that 5-5. Five, five, and then draw two cards off up the Beanstalk. And it's really going to depend on a lot of what he draws here. He does have the one ring, of course, to buy an additional turn. But he's got to find uh, got to find some answers. And Spike can now deal with uh, the Rest in Peace. So. Yep, Haywire, Mike, can get rid of the Rest in Peace. It's true. Which would turn on the Agatha Soul Cauldron, at least. Mm -hmm. All right, so picks up a couple cards. Oh, and he draws Supreme Verdict. Ooh, but there's that, that nice... is huge. Well, there's Absolutely the huge. the welding jar is chilling. Yeah, I mean it's it welding jar is huge, but you you get rid of those creatures, it shrinks down the construct token. 
Um, it's true. Quite a powerful draw there. 